sippy cups, pouches, or straws. Which one do we want to use and what's the big deal anyway? Well, what I want you to think about is the fact that as babies are going from birth to 12 months, they're going through a series of reflexes that nature has intended that they have that actually teach them how to eat safely. And I have a lot of articles about this on my blog. Just search the tag, Feeding Babies. Okay, so right at about six months is when we begin to introduce purees and safe start solids. And that's when you'll often see the baby begin to use that little cute tongue thrust, you know, and they sometimes will push food out of their mouth. Well, between six months up to about 12 months of age, that tongue thrust gradually starts to morph into what we call a mature swallow pattern. Now, what is that? Well, babies swallow like this, okay? They do that little tongue thrust. They, they swallow by pushing their tongue forward and they move backward. But adults swallow, hopefully, with what we call a mature swallow pattern, where the tip of the tongue goes to the alveolar ridge where you say a D or a T right here. D, T, see how that works? So it goes up to that spot and then it squishes up into the roof of your mouth and it sends the food back into your throat. That's the simplified version. So it looks like this, like that. There's no tongue forward movement. Right at about 12 months of age, that's when we start to see that change begin in a child's oral motor pattern. Now, it doesn't really get perfected till about age two, but you should start to see some significant changes between 12 and 14 months where you really start to notice the difference and that thrusting pattern just appears occasionally depending on new foods and, and maybe if they're tired, et cetera, et cetera. All right, that is the issue. When we provide let's just use six month olds as our example, a six month old with a hard spouted sippy cup that's actually going to sit over that tongue tip, they can't lift the tongue tip up to the alveolar ridge because this is blocking it. It's no different than having a thumb or fingers there. And we all know that that contributes to not only palate formation, but also the development of this pattern that we really want to make sure that kids grow out of this little bit of a tongue thrusting pattern. You're supposed to have it when they're younger, but they're not supposed to have it after age one, definitely not by age two. Alrighty, so the occasional hard spouted sippy cup, your kid's going to be fine. But ideally, I would just prefer that you don't buy these at all, to be honest with you, unless there's a medical reason. Because why do we even want to put something in a child's mouth that's going to inhibit development? Why would we want to do that? There are so many other options that will encourage feeding development. So let's talk about those. There are a million different ones. I just grabbed a few to show you. It's really popular to get a stainless steel pop-up straw cup. Okay? Yeah. Well, take a look at this straw. It's actually ideal because not only is it angled, but it's nice and short. Because if your straw on your straw cup is too long, what you essentially have is another hard spouted sippy cup. Whether this is holding down the tongue or this is holding down the tongue. On my website, under my free toolbox tab, I've often shared with you that I have the 10 steps to teaching a child to drink from a straw. And you can start that as young as six months, to be honest with you. The prerequisite is that your child has to be able to suck purees safely off a spoon or off their fingers. That sucking is really important to get started to learn to eventually suck through a straw. But, it, once you start this, you'll see that the 10th step is to cut the straw down. And a cup like this has already achieved that. So take a look at those 10 steps to straw drinking. And then once your child uses those steps to master straw drinking, go ahead and buy something like this because if this is their mouth, look, they can barely get over that straw, right? So that the tip of the straw goes to the tip of the tongue. I want to show you something else I've just recently gotten into, and they're pretty cool. 
Now, this is just something that I'm excited about, um, and I'll be sure to tag this company as well. But these are made by Boone, and they are called a snug straw. So what you've got here is it comes with a cup, but it actually comes with a universal silicone top that you can pop right off and you can put on top of almost any cup. So you can carry these little silicone lids with you and pop them in your um, diaper bag, your purse, your pocket, whatever you want, and add them to any cup wherever you're traveling, if you're at the restaurant or whatever. And then you're just going to, look you guys, insert a straw. How great is that? Now, if you're at a restaurant or, or um, at some random place where you're using a straw, don't worry too much if you can't cut it down. If you can, awesome. But when you're at home, we're gonna remember, we're gonna cut the straw down to the point where just the tip of the straw reaches the tip of the tongue. So the very most that you would want the straw to go in is right there because look guys watch my tongue tip see how it can go up to the alveolar ridge when you're first teaching this technique to a child what you want to do my favorite you've heard me mention it before is just to get some of these silicone straws I get these from talk tools or arc therapeutic I'll put the link in the comments for you and these nice silicone straws the beauty of them is that they're, is they're fairly wide on the outside but the circumference inside, the diameter, I should say, is fairly narrow. So what that does is when you insert it into either a take and toss cup or this wonderful Boone Snug top, you can actually push it down and it holds there really nicely. And now the child can close their lips on the straw and use this soft silicone backing as a lip lock and they'll only get the tip of the straw to the tip of the tongue. Another cool thing about this particular cup is that if you fill it all the way to the top and you're helping a child learn to drink, when you just use your little finger here and touch it, it will actually prime the straw. You just touch it and it'll prime the straw so that they get liquid right at the top and they can quickly learn to drink. Start with my 10 steps to straw drinking, but give these a try. They're so cool. I'm definitely going to contact the company and tell them how awesome these are. Now, if you don't want the child to spill, these are advertised as spill proof, but I've kind of played around with it already. And I'll have to say, I wouldn't recommend in that case to fill it all the way to the top. I'd fill it more like halfway at first. It'll still have a nice weight to it so the child can hold it securely. You want that weight. But if you only go halfway, then it's not as easy for them to press against the top and have things squirt in. So play around with that a little bit. But it's one of the things I love about this product because you do have that flexibility to meet your client or your child's need. Here's another one that's another one of my favorites. I don't think it was ever intended for this, but this is what speech therapists do. They walk into Target, they grab things and go, I know what I'm going to do with this. So you may have heard me talk about this before. These are good to grow apple juices. And, you know, if you've read my book, Adventures in Veggie Land, you know I often talk about the fact that I don't like children to have a lot of juice. It should be an occasional treat or treated like medicine. If we're going to have a little pear juice or apple juice or prune juice to help with constipation, etc. The American Academy of Pediatrics has specific guidelines and doesn't recommend juice for children under the age of two because it leads to dental decay and it also leads to picky eating, in my opinion. I have lots of information about that. Okay, let's keep going. So these little good to grows though, I love these. And what I do is I actually take out the apple juice and I just use it in my cooking. I'll cook some parsnips in it, sweeten those up a little bit, and then I'll get rid of the apple juice. Instead, what I do is I fill these up with water. And because, do you love Batman right here? Because they have these really cute characters, the kids adore them. And they have these patented valves. These valves are actually made in Atlanta and they're patented and they have a little diaphragm inside. So I wouldn't fill this up with something like milk because I don't think they're that easy to clean. They're meant to be recycled and used later. But I feel comfortable dumping out the apple juice, filling them up with water, and the kids can have these for a couple of days. Don't leave it in a hot car though. Okay, I also use these because they are 100% spill proof. You can throw this thing across the room and maybe a drop would come out. I use these in a child's crib 
when they're transitioning from a bottle um, and we're weaning them off the bottle and that they still need something to suck on. Why do I love these? Because here's their cute little mouth, there's the tip of the straw, and when they go to suck on the straw, good old Batman here stops their lips from going too far down and you can, can't help but get the tip of the straw to the tip of the tongue. It provides a natural bite lock no matter what character you get. And look, there's only that much straw. Plus it's spill proof. So not, why not grab a pack of three with different characters? You'll find an article on my website. I'll put it in the comments for you about how to help children learn to drink more water. And these are one of the ways I teach children to drink more water. You're gonna find several tips in that article that I'll tell you a little bit more. Okay, so we have talked about hard spotted sippy cups. No, okay. <laughs> and we've talked about various types of straw cups. You're gonna look for something. If it is a pop-up that has a very short straw or you're gonna cut it down. If it requires biting and sucking, in order to get the fluid out to keep it spill proof that on occasion is fine but you don't want your child to only have one of those because you don't want to teach kids to bite and then suck it's a very different motor pattern than what we're striving for um, some of my children in feeding therapy i will use those as a tool to eventually progress to a regular straw cup so we've talked about a regular straw cup. This one happens to be by Boone. Again, it's called a Snug, S-N-U-G. And you can use this top on any cup. We've talked a little bit about this. We've talked a little bit about good to grows. Love these. Let's talk about pouches in brief. Here we go. So I've posted several articles on my Facebook page about the pros and cons of pouches. Most, not good news about pouches. Check out those articles, you're fine with what I mean, excuse me. <clears throat> but, sometimes we need to use a pouch. Why do we want a child not to use a pouch too often? I'm gonna tell you one reason, and then I want you to check out this YouTube channel that I'm gonna post here shortly, it'll give you a good eight minutes of the pros and cons of these. But one of the reasons why we like children to be able to use a pouch is just to get some high calorie nutrition in. And I have a YouTube video all about adding higher calories to a pouch when a child can only use these because they have a feeding delay. Here's the issue though, just one of the issues. Once again, we have a hard spout that the kids put in over their tongue. And look at these ridges right here. If you've got a child who's really young, I would be concerned about these ridges pressing up against their palate. That's even harder than a thumb. Now, pouches are fairly new. We don't have any research on this. But based on years of experience, many of us are very concerned about the overuse of pouches against the palate and throughout the frontal dentition. So, occasional use, fine. And you know what, you have to, mm, I wouldn't even say occasional use, but once in a while, had to grab it, okay, okay. For free, you just don't buy it. But I want you to really focus on the straw cup, cut the straw down. 